Hello, everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Build 2017. My name is Evgeny Ternovsky, and I'm a program manager on Azure Application Insights. Today, we'll be looking at how to transform your monitoring and diagnostics workflow with Application Insights and specifically the analytics feature within it. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at what Application Insights is as a whole. Application Insights is a service in Azure, and first and foremost, it's an intelligent APM service. What this means is that it will let you detect any issues that are happening with your application, triage them to determine how many users are impacted and how they're impacted, and finally diagnose the issue to figure out what's causing it. It's also an instant analytics platform, meaning that anytime you want to ask deeper questions of all this great data that you've collected, you can write ad hoc queries and get answers back fairly instantly. Finally, it's an integrated DevOps experience. And what this means is, is that the data will not only come into Azure, but also into your IDE, into Visual Studio, where it'll display the telemetry right from within the context of Visual Studio itself. And then if you do detect a bug, you can also hook it up to your favorite work item tracking system, be it VSTS or GitHub, and actually get the data out that way and file a bug up against yourself against this issue that you found. Let's take a look at the ecosystem. The first thing you'll want to do, of course, is to get data into Application Insights. The most common way to do this are our open source SDKs. These are available for the most common platforms out there and live up on GitHub. Feel free to grab them. For uh, platforms where appropriate, we also offer things like NuGet packages or NPM repositories. Then you'll explore your data. We'll talk about analytics today, which is the ad hoc query language, but a bunch more options available for you from um, just basic uh, graphing capabilities to something like the application map, which lays out the entire topology of your application, all its individual components, and shows you how they interact, be it failure rates, latencies, all sorts of stuff. Finally, once you have some queries or some charts that you'd like to keep coming back to, you can operationalize them with a whole number of ways, from Power BI dashboards to Microsoft Azure dashboards to any other number of things. Okay, enough slides. Let's get into the demo and switch to my browser. So here we are in the Azure portal for one of my applications that I've instrumented with Application Insights. You'll see on the left-hand side all the great options that Application Insight offers you. However, today, since we're talking about analytics, let's concentrate on that. There's two ways to get into analytics. The first is this button on the toolbar here, and this will open up a blank query window. Or on any chart in Application Insights, you'll see this blue Open Chart and Analytics button. And clicking this will actually pull up the very queries that were used to generate this chart in analytics and pre-populate them for you so that you have a starting point. Today, however, let's click the normal button. I actually done this before, and so here's what that looks like. You'll have a home page and you'll have some things here from a getting started video to some common queries to more information. Today, however, I'll use the shared queries that I've saved for myself before called build. So the very first query I want to write with you will actually write together instead of executing the pre canned query because I want to show you the experience. The first thing you'll want to do is to define what data source you're working with. And on the left, you'll see all the tables that are available to you from traces to page views to exceptions to all the other things that the Application Insights SDKs are capturing for you. So let's minimize that just to get some more screen real estate back. We'll start by typing in custom events. And you'll notice that IntelliSense pops up and tells us that, hey, here are some tables that start with CU. I'll press tab on my keyboard to lock this suggestion in. And now IntelliSense tells us, hey, with custom events, here are all the different things you can do. Where, count, extend, join, etc. However, today I want to use the limit operator. And so I'll press tab again to lock it in. And here are some suggestions for common values that you might want to use. I'll simply press 10. To run a query, we'll either press Go or Shift Enter on our keyboard. And here's our data. Now, for the purposes of this demo, you and I will be running a flight booking website together. Now, we could analyze various things like page views or exceptions or any of the other things that we looked at before here, but I want to concentrate on specifically custom events. In particular, I have a custom events called Book Flights that fires every time someone on our website 
comes in and books a flight with us. And then as a JSON blob, I have a bunch of custom information being passed in, and this information actually specifies what the flight was that the customer booked, as well as some pricing information. So I want to analyze all of that information, and to do that, we'll start by extracting it from the JSON blob. To do that, I'll use an extend operator, and what extend lets you do is create calculated columns. So let's run this next query, and notice that I'm just using the dot notation for JSON. JSON is a first-class citizen. And then if we scroll all the way to the right, we'll see we have a new column called flight details that actually contains all of that information. Great. Now, this is better, but this is still not very human readable. It's got all sorts of uh, data jammed in there. It's not aligned, etc. So what I want to do is extract all that data into individual columns. For that, I'll use the parse operator, define the pattern with which I want to parse this data, and that'll actually create those columns for me. Now, in case your pattern is more complicated, we also have full regex support for you. But for now, let's go ahead and run this particular query. Let's use our column picker to make sure that all the columns are showing. And you'll notice that JSON blob, all the other things that the SDK pulled in for us, then our custom column here, and then the actual details of the flights here, each one broken out into its own row. Very cool. So now you'll notice we have two columns, one called price cost and one called price paid. One indicates how much the ticket costs us to buy, and the other one is how much we charge the customer for it. So let's do some analysis on this. I actually want to define a couple of additional metrics, one called profit and one called margin. And again, we'll use just some extend operators to do that. We're also going to use a project operator to say, show me just these columns. So let's go ahead and run this query. And what you'll see is we went from this ugly JSON blob to a still ugly string to individual columns to now calculated metrics based on just that particular piece of data. Okay, so what next? I think I want to analyze the profits. I want to see how much money we're making off the website. So let's use a summarize clause and calculate the average profit. Let's go ahead and run that. And you'll notice that our average profit is just about $25 per ticket. And this is great, but I happen to know that we're actually expecting more profit per ticket. So let's try and investigate and see where the rest of the money is going. To do that, I'll modify my query a little bit. And instead of just looking at the average profit, I'll actually look at it in five minute buckets. And you can specify whatever bucket size you want, be it 10 minutes, seven minutes, five hours, et cetera, et cetera. This is completely open-ended. I'll also say render time chart. Analytics has built-in visualization capabilities, and these aren't meant to replace your dashboarding solutions. Rather, they're there to allow you to visually see your data and be able to deduce patterns from it so that you can much easier do that instead of having to scroll all the way through your data and seeing if you can find something that way. So let's run that query and see what happens. And you'll notice that we had pretty good margins there where we expect them at $30 to $40 per ticket. And then we had this huge dip. And that's not good. Thankfully, things came back online. But we really want to investigate this dip to figure out why we were actually losing money during that time frame. So that if it's perhaps a code issue, heaven forbid, we don't run into it again. And so again, we could go back to our data and look at the data just within that time frame and try to figure out what happened. But analytics offers a better way. What you'll notice is this purple pulsating dot over here, and that shows up whenever the tool detects some interesting points. These can be spikes, dips, valleys, peaks, all sorts of things. And you might be saying, well, looking at the data here, clearly that's a dip. Why would I ever want to do anything else with it? Why are you identifying it for me? We actually have some really cool machine learning algorithms built into analytics. So in this case, I can press that dot, and I can have the tool run those algorithms for me and tell me, why we had that dip. Not just that the dip happened, but what led to the dip. So let's do that. Let's press that dot and see what the tool comes up with. It'll go and run those machine learning algorithms. And it says, hey, I found a pattern that I think accounts for this dip. And the pattern is that the origin code was Seattle and the destination airport was San Francisco. And now we can also have a look at how accurate the pattern is. What the tool does is breaks out your data without the pattern and with the pattern. So without the pattern, you'll notice we have a straight line. 
we're getting those 30 to $40 returns that we expect. But with the pattern, and notice by the way that the pattern corresponds specifically to that time range when we had the incident, and we're actually losing a ton of money on these Seattle to San Francisco tickets. So we go off, we tell our business desk, hey, look, this happened, do you know anything? Should we do something about it? And they say, actually, you know what? We were running a promotion during this time on tickets from Seattle to San Francisco to encourage people to use our website more. And so we know about this. This was an expected loss. So perhaps this particular issue was not really an issue, but notice how we were able to go with just a few simple lines of code from an unreadable JSON string to being able to detect that there was an issue to being able to analyze what the issue is and root cause analysis. Okay, well now that the crisis has been averted, let's switch back to our data. And by the way, if you want to learn more about their machine learning capabilities, there's another video here at Build that will walk you through those in more detail and I encourage you to check that out. But let's get back to the raw data here. You'll notice that one of the things that we see is that we have a bunch of acronyms in here. And maybe you and I understand what these acronyms mean, but other people might not. And so I actually want to get these into a more human readable format. Let's switch back to the slides for a second and see the feature that will let us help do that. The feature I have in mind is called Open Schema. And what Open Schema allows you to do is to upload completely custom data into Application Insights. Why might you want to do this? Well, there's three main reasons. One is for data enrichment. So look up tables like this for acronyms, for machine names, for locations, any other thing that you want to make more human readable. The other is correlation with non-application inside data sources. So maybe you have some other logging telemetry systems from where you want to get data into application insights. And finally, completely custom data altogether. Maybe you want to use these machine learning capabilities and the query language to apply that to your own data. You can do that. There's two ways to ingest data. One is what we call the native ingestion method, which allows you to essentially upload either a CSV or a TSV or a JSON file up into a blob storage and then call a REST API saying, hey, there's this blob file here, ingest it for me. The other one is with a Logstash adapter. And there are some limitations, but let's switch back to the demo and see open schema in action. So, I happen to have a table here with Open Schema called Carrier Codes, and what it contains is the description of all the airline names and their actual names as well as the acronyms. So let's go ahead and use, actually let me minimize this a little bit, let's use a joint statement to actually bring the two tables together and have them in a human readable form. So you'll note that as before we have the airline acronym, but we also now have the airline name, much easier to read. Let's take a look at another table I have called flights. What flights contains is uh, details of every single flight that took place in the United States in 2016. And we have 4.7 million such flights that we tracked. Here's what the data looks like. And notice that it looks nothing like what the Application Insights SDKs generate. This is completely custom. So what could we do with this data? Well, maybe we want to look at the average daily delay by airline of these flights. And here that is after a quick load time, you'll notice that we have for every day for every airline a data point that says what the average delay was. Maybe we want to get some other statistics, minima, maxima, standard deviation, etc., and we can do that. Maybe we want to do a weekly running average. And note that I'm still using the exact same operators. The language applies regardless of what your data source is. So here is a weekly moving average using the FIR operator. Maybe we want to look at the most popular flights out there in the United States. And when we look at the results, we know that the two most popular flights were from San Francisco to LA and LA back to San Francisco. Makes sense. Now, our business is based in Seattle. And so maybe we want to concentrate a little bit more on this particular market. We'll run this next query, which will tell us from where the most flights into Seattle are. And not only that, but we can also look at what carriers were serving those flights. So we can see that most of the flights into Seattle were from LA, and most of those flights were with Alaska. Now, my business department saw this and they say, this is a really cool graph, we want to see this all the time. Can you build a B Power BI dashboard for us? And we can. Let's press export. 
and say Power BI Query. This will download the new text file. Don't worry about what's in here, just copy it in its entirety. Switch into Power BI Desktop. We'll press Get Data, Blank Query. And in the Advanced Editor, we'll simply paste that query that got generated for us and press Done. And you'll notice that the data from Analytics from that very query that we ran now got pulled into Power BI. Let's close and apply. It will actually go out and pull the full data set back. And then we can start building our dashboards the way we would with any other data source in Power BI. So here's our data. And I want to have the origin, destination, and count. And we want to visualize this as a bar chart as well. And then I want to split it by the unique carrier. So I'll drag that under legend. And maybe ma let's make this a little bit bigger. And now I can publish this and have it be available to anyone, regardless of whether they even have permissions or not, just as a Power BI dashboard, I can schedule a regular refresh, and we can have this operationalized for our business department. Great, so that's the demos I have for you today. Hopefully, this encouraged you to start using Application Insights and to explore it with analytics. The best way to do that is, of course, to instrument your own application and play around with your own data, start getting insights from it. There is a bunch of other things that we have for you from a demo environment that we pre-populated with some demos for you, as well as some self-guided tutorials. Definitely check that out. To other sessions here in Build, from an Analytics 101 to other sessions about Application Insights or Machine Learning. Check out all the resources that we have available for you and don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you how you're using Application Insights and Analytics, if you have any questions, etc. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of Build.